The new McFarlane Toys Batman Classic TV Series Penguin is hitting shelves. Is it better than the 2013 version by Mattel? <coughs> this is one versus you do not want to miss. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Starting off the packaging, and both figures come on colorful blister cards. As we've seen before, the McFarlane one is a bit more minimalistic. You got your orange dots, your blue dots, the Vortex from Army of Darkness. The Mattel one is decidedly, and I think appropriately, more garish. Big splashy name, Batman and Robin scaling a building. Holy nick of time! And on the side, a hint of the card it comes with. As for how they pulled off that card, we'll have that conversation during playability. One thing that both figures have in common, however, is the Batman and classic TV series logo. Flipping them around and the backs are pretty different as well. Nice little callback by the way. From a graphics design standpoint this one's a lot tighter but this one is a lot more fun. For packaging, this round goes to Mattel. Moving on to presentation, and the Mattel figure stands at just under six and a quarter inches. The McFarlane one, however, stands at six on the dot. First things first, and from a figure for 2013, this isn't that bad. It's not overly detailed, but it does feel like a pretty fair caricature. You look at the McFarlane one, though, and it actually kind of does look over detailed. All the lines and wrinkles on his face are unmistakable. They even gave him his moles. On the Mattel one, the monocle is just a gold ring sculpted into the head. Here, it's a separate transparent plastic piece. One minor detail that McFarlane overlooked was the Penguin's hat band. As we can see, that's one detail that Mattel did not overlook. Another small but important detail that Mattel did not overlook was the Penguin's very fashionable cigarette holder. I'm assuming that McFarlane just wasn't allowed to do it, and to be honest, this doesn't exactly look good. Moving on down, and we can definitely see some differences in how his suit was executed. One baffling difference is the color choice. Whereas the Mattel figure is clearly wearing a black suit, the McFarlane one is more of a really dark green gray green. That said, the Mattel figure looks kind of baggy around the arms and pants. The McFarlane figure opts for a tighter cut, and honestly that does seem more accurate to the show. <laughs> Another feature of the McFarlane figure that I like is that they went in and textured the vest. Unfortunately, they did not go in and texture his gloves, which on the show were depicted as being fuzzy. Flipping them around and we can see both figures' tail coats. The Mattel one is fairly pliant, whereas the McFarlane one is not. Moving all the way down and both figures have their very high society spats. Oddly enough, this actually leads me to another kind of major criticism. As you can see, the Mattel figure has a peg hole. The McFarlane one, however, does not. So far, every other figure in the wave has had peg holes, and not only has that been essential to any kind of dynamic figure photography, but it's often essential in just getting the figures to stand. I'll be looking at Catwoman in a different video, but I did decide to peek ahead and yeah, no peg holes on her either. She also has high heels, so Oh, yay! Well, I guess there's only one thing for me to do. Alright, here we go. And... not yet. A little more. Unfortunately, starting to kind of wear out the side a bit. And success! That ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and there you go! Peg holes a la Jason. I absolutely should not have had to do that. With all that criticism, you might think I'd be giving this category to Mattel, but that is actually not the case. Despite my issues, the McFarlane one is objectively better sculpted and better painted. For presentation, this round goes to McFarlane. Moving on to posability, and unsurprisingly, there are some pretty major differences there as well. From the top, and I'm not entirely sure what the Mattel version has, there's a slight amount of wiggle that makes me think that there's a ball joint. Either way, his head turns side to side. The McFarlane one, on the other hand, definitely is is a ball joint. Not only does it turn, but it can get a slight amount of up and down. Moving on down, and both figures have swivel hinge shoulders. McFarlane definitely has a bit more range, but one thing that the Mattel figure has is a bicep swivel. As you can see, it works like so and really breaks up the sculpt. 
The McFarlane figure might not have a bicep swivel, but it does have a single jointed swivel elbow. So not only can it flex, it can also move side to side. This serves the same function as a bicep swivel without that ugly joint. Moving all the way down the arm and both figures have a swivel wrist. Shifting to the torso and both figures have a waist cut. The Mattel one is pretty obvious, but the McFarlane one is discreetly hidden beneath the vest. Below the waist and both figures can kick outward, but the Mattel one has a sideways hinge. It's one of the biggest differences that I desperately want to see integrated into the McFarlane line. Moving on down and both figures have a single jointed knee. The Mattel one flexes a lot deeper, but the McFarlane one has a swivel. Lastly, the Mattel version has an ankle hinge. Generally speaking, penguins aren't exactly known for their dexterity. Even so, the added hip and ankle articulation make this felonious waterfowl a bit more functional. For posability, this round goes to Mattel. Moving on to playability, and of course the Mattel penguin comes with this umbrella. You can't have the penguin without an umbrella. He can hold it like so, or he can hold it like so. He also comes with a display base. Fun fact, the reason why Burgess Meredith's version of the penguin quacked was actually because of his cigarette. The quacks were actually his way of disguising his coughs. The base has a slot to display a card, and as for that card, well, you're kind of looking at it. Don't see it? Keep looking. Maybe this'll help. Still nothing? Here you go! This package has a secret compartment, and I am here for it. One side of the card is the penguin running for mayor. That episode inspired the plot of Batman Returns. The reverse is a section of the Batcave. Personally, I don't think it's much of a display stand if the figure covers it, but hey, that works. Moving on to the McFarlane one, though, and he comes with snap-on sound effects that we've already gotten. And that's it. Not a single umbrella in sight. Not only that, but whereas other figures in the line have a weapon-holding hand, so you could feasibly use somebody else's umbrella, the McFarlane one has a big, wide open hand, so you can't even do that. You can loosely balance the Mattel one in there, but it cannot clip into place. Not giving a character a gun because of a stupid corporate mandate is one thing. But even when they do that, McFarlane always gives us a weapon holding hand so that we can use our own. Also, if you watch the show, you'd know that the Penguin almost never used it as a gun. He either fenced with it like a sword or used it to gas people. Luckily, playability is more than just accessories it's also about how well your figure plays with others. For some Penguin comparisons, here we have the DC Comics Super Heroes version by Toy Biz. This was pretty much an authorized bootleg of the Superpowers figure. Next up is the Batman Returns Penguin by Kenner. This was pretty much just a repaint of the Superpowers figure. Here we have Legends of the Dark Knight also by Kenner. The Batman Returns influence is pretty obvious by the mutated hands and face. Here's a DC Direct one also looking fairly monstrous. For another white suited Penguin, here's a Japanese import distributed by DC Direct. Here we have the Penguin based on his look from Batman the Animated Series. This one was made by DC Collectibles. And for a couple of Mattel comparisons, we have this one from DC Universe Classics Series 1 and the Silver Age one from Batman Unlimited. For another comic-style Silver Age comparison, we've got Catwoman. Definitely check out that video if you haven't already. And here they are with the Joker. For a classic comic book-style Robin, here we have DC Universe Classics. And of course, here they are with Batman. On the subject of Batman, here they are with the Adam West version by McFarlane Toys. Not gonna lie, I think it looks a bit too short for both of them. Anyway, here they are with that version of Robin, and here they are with the Joker and the Riddler. Here's our McFarlane Toys Adam West Batman collection so far. The figures have their limitations, but it is a fun little set. Swapping out the McFarlane Penguin for the Mattel, and here you go. If you've already got it and you're happy with it, then honestly, I think it fits in pretty well. Also, if you have a DC Universe Classics collection, but maybe don't care for their version of the Penguin, this doesn't look half bad either. For a slightly taller version of Adam West Batman, here they are with the NECA one. This one admittedly might be a bit too big. And on the subject of being too big, for relative scale comparison, here they are with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here they are with Stealth Iron Man. As Danny DeVito said in Batman Returns, what it all comes down to is who's holding the umbrella. I'm pretty sure we can all agree it's definitely not this guy. For playability, this round goes to Mattel. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. The McFarlane figure was $17.99 at Target, which I hardly think counts as a value. <coughs> the Mattel figure, on the other hand, has better articulation, more accessories, and was only $20 on eBay. That said, just because I found it for $20 bucks does not necessarily mean that you will. If all you want is an affordable, well-sculpted Burgess Meredith Penguin for your collection, for price, the McFarlane figure is absolutely satisfactory, but overall, the Mattel Meredith wins 3-2. to two. 
For more Batman Classic TV series related videos, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon. Same bat time, same bat channel. Until then, play nice and have fun.